Just about 16 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock. I'm Kimberly D'Souza, and this is the Now Morning Show. Now, May is recognized as Healthy Vision Month, and so to talk to us more about the importance of eye care is Dr. Vineet Kumar, who is the consultant ophthalmologist at uh, CVRS and Trinidad Eye Hospital. Dr. Kumar, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on the Now Morning Show. Very good morning to you, Kimberly. Um, lovely um, to see you this morning, and lovely to see uh, all the viewers who are listening in to us. Of course. Now, Dr. Kumar, I mean, we have been talking about healthy vision, or we know healthy vision a lot, but what does it really mean to have a healthy vision? Uh, actually, uh, since I've been asked to do this interview, um, I'm trying to look for the right explanation to give you, actually, Kimberly. <laughs> and I think the best way to look at it is um, if you came into clinic and I, as a professional um, eye care specialist, would, after examining your eyes, um, look at variables like your vision for distance, vision for near, and I would examine your eyes thoroughly and make sure that there is no other problems that you have, and then give you a clean bill to say that you actually have good vision because your eyes are healthy. Hence, that would give us a good idea of what healthy vision means. Now, Dr. Kumar, we've always heard things like 2020 vision. Is 2020 vision really the ideal? Uh, good point. Uh, good point. Very good point. Uh, 2020 vision uh, for a lot of viewers, when we talk about this distance vision, which is measured um, at a certain 20 feet, um, what is important to understand is that can be done with glasses or without glasses. So if you do have good vision, with or without glasses, that we call as good vision. But just having 2020 vision with your eyes falling apart is not healthy eyes. Right. And so healthy eyes, it seems to be connected to like other parts of the of the body, right? So in terms of exercising and that sort of thing. Absolutely. So when we look at healthy eyes, what we're looking at is the complete eye, which is part of the body, which is um, a function. We use the cliche terminology, it's the um, window to the soul. And so if you actually look after your body, and I saw the um, clip previously, and I saw you're enjoying with your friends as well. So the various aspects that we look at about health, how we conduct ourselves at a personal level, that is eye care, how we look after ourselves from a diet point of view, do we exercise? And in Trinidad, we are blessed with wonderful fresh air and sunshine. How do we maximize the utilization of all these things? So it's actually personal care, environment, and awareness to seek help if there is any problems gives you the functionality of healthy eyes. And it's not um, in isolation, it's an entirety that is important to understand. And, and as an individual, if one can understand that that is how it works, and we are here as professionals to actually support you in ensuring that your eyes are healthy and you see the beautiful world that is offered to us, and um, that makes it an enjoyable experience. Now, Dr. Kumar, of course, we have the beautiful weather that you mentioned that we can maximize on. But in terms of the risk and, and uh, some of the you know causes of bad vision for us here in the country, what are some of those risks? Well, um, I think uh, you asked me to walk into that, um, Kimberly. Um, the, the sunshine is fantastic as such, but overexposure to the sunshine can contribute to sometimes dryness in the eyes. And a lot of us, including myself, have dry eyes. That is the little glands present on our lid margin, um, which contribute to keep our tear films um, intact and keep our eyes lubricated very well. When they dry up, the vision becomes blurred and that produces headache. So sunshine in excess has its own problems. But remember, we also have the problem with Sahara dust and they also produce allergy diseases. Sunshine in excess can contribute to cataract, can also contribute to problems at the back of the eyes without you being aware of something called as macular degeneration. So in Trinidad, I see that um, we also have a lot of people who smoke and that contributes to problem. 
lack of hygiene, um, particularly with hand hygiene in keeping your eyes clean, your environment such as the water, etc., if it's not clean, and we put that into the eyes, they can contribute to problems. Then the other big thing that we have forgotten to talk about is poor diet, um, which we see in plenty out here, particularly with diabetes, blood pressure, and various other problems contributing to poor health. Mm, interesting. Now, uh, I've seen a lot of people, because of the dry eyes that you just mentioned, they just go randomly to any pharmacy and they buy those eye drops. Is that really something that we should be doing, just putting this thing in our eyes all the time? Good question. Um, I, I hope nobody gets offended with my answer. So my opinion on this is um, sometimes um, you find that uh, people find relief with um, just using the lubricants that is available. There are simple techniques that you can practice at home. Make sure your hands are clean and using some warm compress over your eyelids, massaging your eyelids, just improves the oil flow into the eyes. That in itself avoids you putting any medicine into the eyes. I do not like chemicals into the eyes. And if that does not resolve your problem, then seek help from your professionals, either the optometrist or your eye doctor, who will do a thorough examination of your eyes and see if there's any, anything that is contributing to your dry eyes. We have a lot of professionals who actually use laptops and various other um, gadgets for their everyday work. And they continue to stare at these screens and they do have a lot of digital eye strain. So one of the things do, we do recommend to most of our people um, is that we, at every 20 minutes, we take 20 seconds mm -hmm. off our looking at the screens and blink about 20 times and look at 20 feet. That is 20, 20, 20 helps overcome the problem with dryness in the eyes to a certain extent. But there's a small group who need a lot more medication. And that is when we come into the picture and support them appropriately. Nice. Dr. Kumar, you actually jumped ahead because that was going to be my next question. How can we, you know, protect our eyes from this long exposure, of course, um, to all the laptops and the screens and that sort of thing? But we have delved into some of the tips that we can use. So can you provide any more for how we can protect, you know, um, to even protect our eyes or even improve our vision uh, as we continue? I think as I would break it down, Kimberly, into personal care. And I spoke about how we can do the little bits with our eyes about warm compressors, massaging our eyes, taking care of it. What we can also look and make sure is that if you need any glasses or anything else, seeking out help with your professionals, whether it's your local optometrist or eye doctor, see them and get them sorted out. And also ensure that you drink plenty of water Look at what you eat for your diet. Make sure that the appropriate vitamins and minerals are there in your diet. Um, I'm not a big fan of supplements, but if there is reasons for you to take supplements, I'm happy with that. But your natural diet, and particularly what we have available in Trinidad, is in plenty. And I think it provides every nutrient to look after your eye health, not just your eyes, your whole body, which I said earlier on is part of a and a reflection of your how you manage your eyes. Right. Now, Dr. Kumar, we have those things where we, we, I think we normally refer to them as floaters. Um, is this any indication that we have poor vision or that we need to be get or that we need to get tested immediately? Um, interesting, Kimberly. Yesterday we had an um, uh, um, uh, optometrist um, teaching session um, um, in the evening um, conducted by Trinidad Eye Hospital with God, this particular subject. Um, to just talk about floaters, um, floaters is something that we all experience. I have one in my right eye. Um, it's a process where the vitreous, that is the jelly at the back of your eyes, which you can't physically see, um, to starts breaking down um, in every person. Usually, you tend to see this over the age of 80, but some people tend to start it early. Somebody who is short-sighted, or who has had some um, um, changes in the eyes can present this early. It is just a process of the jelly breaking down. Now, if you have never had floaters and you suddenly develop floaters, you need to see your eye doctor simply because it might mean that there could be a pull on the jelly at the back of the eyes producing some damage, which needs to be thoroughly assessed and made sure that there's no problem at the back of the eyes. 
And once you meet your eye care professional, they will talk you through how to manage your floaters and when to seek help and where to go forward uh, from there onwards. So just having floaters is not that you have poor eyes. Uh, it is a process that happens in everybody as long as your brain recognizes that shadow that is put on by the floaters, you see it. Otherwise, you don't necessarily see it. And now, how can how can poor vision affect an individual's lives and, by extension, the country as a whole? Wow, that's a. I think you have to give me an hour to talk about that, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you two minutes. You know what I'm Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> two minutes. Okay. So. Again, when you have poor vision, um, you can't appreciate yourself, um, how you look, how you conduct yourself, and how you function. So when you lose your independence um, at a given level, and if it is a chronic problem, you lose your economic independence as well. And once you lose your economic independence, then you become a burden to the family, and the family gets affected. And once the family gets affected, then the society, and in turn, the country. That you see how eye health is interlinked so much, not just to your body, to the economic production within the country and the health of the nation. And I have a saying that um, um, it's important that we raise the awareness of eye problems because um, the health of your eyes and your body is a reflection of the country. A healthy individual is a wealthy country. So it's important that we pay attention to um, how we improve eye health, and largely by education, by introducing screening through our health centers, particularly for conditions like diabetes. And a gap that we have at this point of time, which we can look at, is vision screening in most of the schools, not just the primary schools and secondary schools, so that we don't leave behind children. 80 to 90% of the problems that we have with visual challenges are preventable. And we need to make a serious effort as participants in the community and in the country to make a difference out there. Now, Dr. Kumar, we would have mentioned it uh, a few times during the interview in terms of the effect diabetes has on eye health and, you know, vision. But if you get a diagnosis of diabetes, I mean, is this the end for you? I mean, is there anything you can do to strengthen your eyes or improve your vision at that point? Wonderful question. Um, as you rightly pointed out, with diabetes, uh, we all understand the fact that we have excessive sugar running around in our body. And if you took 100 people with diabetes, what you find is that at least about 60 people will not have much changes at the back of the eyes. I'm specifically focusing on the eyes. So it's not the end all for everybody. The next 40 people will have some changes, out of which about 30 to 35 of them will have minimal or changes which need observation. It's only about five out to 10 out of the 100 will need treatment like injections and interventions where we come into the picture. So if you look at the spectrum of 100 people, 90 actually do well. And what is beautiful is that with screening, if we pick them up early and show them some changes and you improve your blood sugar and make a difference with your health, um, your eye health improves, your body health improves, your mental health improves, and as a consequence, um, you do not develop damage to the eyes, and your eyes are beautiful to appreciate the beautiful things around. Now, Dr. Kumar, we have about just under a minute left, but I know that eye care is not one of the, um, the, the issues that we really put much focus on here locally. I mean, for the viewers who are looking, anything you can tell them so that they can go and get their eyes tested? Um, as I said, your eye health um, is a reflection of your um, whole body wealth. Please um, make sure that personal care is taking care of your eyes. Keep your hands clean when you touch your eyes. No touching your eyes inadvertently. Um, if you can get to see your professional optometrist or ophthalmologist once every year, and if there is no problem, that is fine. A review of it is very important. Once you've taken care of yourself, you make sure that the education is spread to your friends, family, and colleagues. And in turn, you can raise the awareness um, for somebody who has eye problems. So we all have to participate to ensure that we are taking care of our eyes. And in turn, our society is going to be helping ensuring that the eye care is taken. And hopefully, the government and various other agencies which participate in this process will work with us. But most important, we have to start taking care of ourselves.
Nice. I love that. Start taking care of ourselves. Dr. Kumar, thank you so much for joining us on now. And I hope, you know, the viewers get really good information about getting their eyes tested. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kimberly, for having us. And that was Dr. Vineet Kumar, who is a consultant ophthalmologist at our CVRS and Trinidad Eye Hospital. We're going to take a break and be right back, but we have sports. What's next? Stay with us.